Hi everyone, welcome to our presentation, Preventing Discharge to NoFix Address Youth, also called the NFAY Project. First off, I would like to thank our funders for sponsoring this important work. This includes the National Centers of Excellence, Making the Shift, Youth Social Innovation Lab, and the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation National Housing Strategy. This work would also not be possible without this collaboration and support of our many community partners. So I'll start off by talking about what the No Fix Address Youth Program is. The aim of this program is to help psychiatric inpatient youths who are at risk of being discharged to homelessness find stable housing upon hospital discharge. Psychiatric inpatient youths across two hospitals in London were able to access in-hospital housing supports through an on-site housing worker. That housing stability worker helped clients access financial supports like Ontario Works and also help youth transition from the hospital to community upon discharge. Our study tested the effectiveness of a potential best practice intervention prevent for preventing discharge into homelessness for youths ages 16 to 24. Upon study completion, administrative data from hospitals, community agencies involved, and ICS will be assessed to determine change in the rates of discharge from hospital to homelessness for youth. All youth who accessed the program, uh, the NoFix Address program, were asked to complete research interviews. Interviews were conducted prior to discharge, so while the youth was still in the hospital, at six months and also at 12 months post-discharge. Information collected in interviews include demographics, housing history, housing preference and needs, quality of life was assessed, service utilization of clients were recorded, the youth SPADAT tool or the service prioritization decision assessment tool was completed, and also a program feedback form was also completed during interviews. Focus groups were also conducted with both youth and also care providers or service providers. Um, in the program to examine perceptions of the intervention, strengths of the implementation, strategies, and suggestions for improving the program. This is an ongoing study, so we are still actively recruiting youths for our research. As you can see here, youths have to be between the ages of 16 to 24 in order to participate. They also have to be currently homeless or at risk of being homeless upon hospital discharge, and they must be psychiatric inpatients at one of the two participating hospitals. As of July 2021, nine participants accessed the program, two males, six females, and one other participant who identified as non-binary. Eight participants agreed to participate in our research, one male, seven females, with the mean age of 18.4. The most common forms of psychiatric diagnoses in our youth sample are mood disorders such as depression, with 75% identifying they have a mood disorder, 62.5% of youth identified having an anxiety disorder, 37.5% of youth reported having a developmental disorder such as autism, and 37.5% also identified having PTSD. Focus groups with youth participants and community partners have been conducted. Uh, they were conducted with both NFAY youth participants and in conjunction with participants and staff involved in the H2I study, which is the same program but for adults. Several important findings emerged. We found that there was greater communication and collaboration between many different agencies and community partners um, who were involved. They could come together and collaborate and offer different services and more comprehensive care for clients. Having a single internal contact to the network between participating agencies also improved coordination of care. Based on preliminary findings from focus groups, our team made this infographic of tips to help implement similar programs to prevent discharge to homelessness in other communities. Communication, collaboration, and coordination is essential to successful implementation. Firstly, we need to recognize that discharge to homelessness could be a problem in your community. Homeless shelters and hospitals collect administrative data on how frequently patients are discharged into homelessness. And then working with community agencies to address the issue is important uh, and also important to identify key needs within a community and develop a program to address these needs. It is also important to establish relationships with private landlords. Finally, it is good practice to establish a primary point of contact who can oversee admission and referrals. The staff should be present on site to build trusting relationships with patients. We hope that findings from this study could help bring about awareness and supports to address the issue of discharge to homelessness for psychiatric inpatients. Thank you for listening to our presentation. I will now be opening up the floor to any questions.